Um, I would like to call the meeting to order of our Bridgewater Rainham Regional School Committee Wednesday, November 12, 2014, here at the Rainham Middle School. They'll call the meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. We are actually returning from executive session, and we did take a vote that we will be uh, reporting in just a moment. But first of all, I'd like to welcome you all for coming this evening. Thank you very much, and ask you to please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before you sit, if we could just have a moment of silence for our veterans, yesterday being Veterans Day, and our military members that are serving. Thank you very much. We are returning from executive session, as I mentioned, and I'd just like to introduce our committee members. On my far left, we have Mrs. Julie Sklaparis, and this is Michelle Williams, Dr. Susan Kruandowski, and from our Rainian Board of Selectmen, uh, Chairman Dick Shavo, and also next to me, our Superintendent, Dr. Forbes. On my right, David Clapham, who is our Vice Chairman, James Curtin, Mrs. Lorraine Levy, um, Tony Gelfi, and we have a student, I believe, joining us, as well representing our students at Bridgewater Rainham. Um, we did vote in executive session, and we will uh, ratify that vote right now. It is on a co our contract, three-year contract, with our Bridgewater Rainham Education Association. So before I comment on, well, let me just say, initially, I would like to just state first that uh, assure everyone that our, every member of our school committee um, realizes that our most valuable resource in our effort to provide our students with the best education that we can is collectively speaking our teachers. We also understand that not only is teaching a profession unlike any other and that no profession is more valuable to our community, but we also understand that de the demands on teachers today is like unlike any of the demands of the past. Teachers today have so much more paperwork to complete, so many more regulations to meet and students who pose so many more challenges than ever before. Too many times, unfortunately, they also have to deal with parents who are not quite as cooperative as all of the parents of the past. So we greatly appreciate our teachers and we certainly entered those contract negotiations with that uppermost in our mind. But of course, we also have to be fiscally responsible because we are uh, responsible and answerable to our communities. As part of our, uh, I believe it's law, but also as part of our Bridgewater Rainham Regional Agreement, every time there is a teacher contract, we have one member of our communities serve, uh, one of the elected officials serve on the, take the vote with us and serve on as a ninth member of the committee. It alternates between Bridgewater, a member of the town council one year, and the next contract, which in this case is three years later, a member of the Rainham uh, Board of Selectmen, which is why Mr. Shavo is joining us for this vote, and we thank him for his input and his effort uh, participating with us. With that, um, I guess I should outline the the highlights of the agreement. It is a three-year agreement, and the highlights of it um, is 2% increase for each year, which the district um, is in the guidelines of what our communities have uh, told us, our town officials have told us that uh, um, is within their guidelines of what is affordable. 2% increase each year for the teachers only as part of the BRA, uh, BREA agreement. There are also significant changes in the early retirement incentive, which will save the district money in the near future and uh, considerable funds going forward. Um, the early retirement incentive is actually eliminated for any new hires and those current teachers, it is, um, it is capped and also the years of eligibility have been reduced and um, there is a 10 year service uh, requirement in order to be eligible for that. Um, spring parent-teacher conferences have been restored, and that was really important to uh, the school committee members. We know it's really important to parents. That was the one concern that we heard more than anything else, and also heard that from many teachers, that those parent, spring parent-teacher conferences are really important. The use of the student information system is also going to be improved. 
and uh, teacher preparation time is going to be um, equitable across the district now and the agreement is now more reflective of the technology that is available to the district and its staff. I think uh, we did a different kind of bargaining this time. It's interest-based bargaining where there was a lot of discussion between the members of the BREA negotiating committee and our negotiating committee. I would like to thank those members on our side, which was Mr. Clapham, um, Mrs. Skoparis, Dr. Prewandowski served with me on that, and all of the members headed up obviously by the president of the BREA. Um, and who is with us this evening, I believe? Donna Holt, thank you Mrs. Holt. And um, with that, I would like to, before I ask Mrs. Holt if she'd like to say a few words, I would like to um, see if we have a vote to ratify the three-year BREA agreement with the Bridgewater Rainier Regional School Committee. Do we have a motion? Yeah. Motion by Mr. Gelfie, second by Mrs. Williams. And um, we will take a roll call vote. Mrs. Skloparis? Aye. Uh, Mrs. Williams? Aye. Dr. Perwindowski? Aye. Mr. Um, Chavo? Aye. Mr. Clapham? Aye. Mr. Curtin? Aye. Mrs. Levy? Aye. Mr. Galfi? Aye. And the chair votes aye. It is a unanimous vote. Yay. Thank you very much. Mrs. Holt, would you like to uh, comment? Good evening. Um, I would just like to let everyone know that the teachers also ratified the contract today at 4 o'clock. It was unanimous for the most part. Um, it was very positively looked upon. It's a great contract. I would like to thank all the members of school committee as well as administration who was on negotiations. You did an exceptionally great job. Um, I think that we all worked very well together um, and that was something that I shared with our membership as well thanking all the members of school committee as well as administration. We certainly worked together collaboratively and in good faith. I've been on many negotiation teams. They all had some positives, but I will say that this one was exceptional. So I'd like to thank all of you for your hard work. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mrs. Holt. I think um, it is beneficial for the teachers, for the district, and especially for the students. Absolutely, thank and that was our priority. The students were number one. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, moving to our, if we could um, move on the agenda, uh, building subcommittee members <coughs> recognition. And we would like to recognize and thank our members of the uh, our building subcommittee. We had a um, big project, actually three big projects, the roofs at the La Liberty Elementary School, the Merrill Elementary School, and the Arena Middle School, I mean, excuse me, the Bridgewater Middle School that needed uh, replacement. And we reached out to, uh, in addition to our staff, but also to the community to see if we could get some people to serve on that. And we had the most exceptional committee we possibly could. We had such expertise in the community, and those people not only had the expertise, but were willing to serve. So we greatly appreciate that, and we would like to recognize them at this time. We have a very nice certificate that our secretary, Judy McDougall, uh, prepared for us. And it does say um, certificate. Let me start with. I'm going to read that for Dr. Forbes. Don't go away. We have um, certificate of appreciation. The certificate is awarded to Mr. Ralph Noblin for participation in the Bridgewater Rainham Regional School District Building Subcommittee 2014 to 2015 roof projects. We came in on time, which was <laughs> wonderful, and everything uh, worked really well. I believe Mr. Noblin could not be with us, but. I believe we were lucky because we, oh, he is. Yes. Wonderful. Mr. Noblin, if you would. John is. John, John is. Oh, John. Yeah. Okay. Mr. John Noblin, can you believe that we have two wonderful, um, experienced, one from Bridgewater and one from Rain Am served, and this one is, if I can find yours, John, you can take both. It would be the last one, wouldn't it? Here we are. This is for Mr. John Noblin for participation in the Bridgewater Rain Am Regional School District Building Subcommittee. You can take yours, and if you could deliver this to Ralph, well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I just hope the two towers know that we, we actually got lucky. Thank you. If we didn't get the contract that we did yet, we would have paid $2 million more, okay. okay. which would have been a million dollars each in the town. So wow. It is a good thing. Thank you very thank much, you. John. 
We also have here, Dr. Focus, would you like to read this one? Yes. This Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Mr. Jay Leach for participation in the bridgewater Rainham Regional School District Building Subcommittee, the 2014-15 Roof Project. And it is signed by Patricia Riley and Jacqueline Forbes. Mr. Frank Campbell for, particip for participation on the Bridgewater Rainham Regional School District Building Subcommittee 2014-15 Roof Project. Thank you, Frank. I've enjoyed working with you. Couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. by no means least, is not actually last. Mr. Joseph Betancourt for participation in the Bridgewater Rainham Regional School District Building Subcommittee. I think it was Mr. Betancourt that first said to me, you're not going to have just school people decide and, and look watch over this, are you? Why, <laughs> Mr. Betancourt, are you volunteering? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> we couldn't have done it without you. Yes, you could. <laughs> Not as well. Not as well. She's right. The chair is correct. And also our school committee members that served, we have Mr. George Vazvatikis, who is a former member. He did leave us, but hopefully he'll come back again soon. Um, George, while serving on the school committee, served on the building subcommittee. George, thank you very much. this certificate to Mrs. Julie Scoperis for her participation on the um, building subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, we'd like to uh, pre present this certificate to Dr. Susan Prewindowski for serving on the building subcommittee. And I am now overriding Dr. Oh. Forbes in awarding these three because Mr. Al Baroncelli, who served on the committee, our director of uh, um, uh, custodial services, director of facilities. facilities. Is, is uh, Al here? No, we'll give that to Al, because he did yeoman's work, as he always does. And also Ms. Kathy Macedo, uh, director of business services. <laughs> Kathy is one of our true unsung heroes. Thank you, Kathy. And our fearless leader, Dr. Forbes. Thank you. Thank you. I think we will take a moment recess, a very brief recess. We'll be back in two minutes. We'll call the meeting back to order. And continuing, we have the approval of minutes of the October 15th meeting. Members have a copy. Do we have a motion to um, approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Motion by Dr. Perundowski, second, second by Mrs. Scott Harris. Any discussion on the motion to approve? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Under correspondence and recognition, um, Dr. Forbes, we have some students to recognize. Yes, we do. Uh, with us this evening is Geraldine Flory, who is an eighth grader from the Rainham Middle School, and she is a local hero. Um, she's been recognized by the um, Rainham Fire Department, and I'd like to ask her principal to speak. Please uh, step up to the podium and tell us about uh, Geraldine's um, heroic act. Oh, thank you. Welcome, Mr. Florence. Good evening, Madam Chair, Dr. Forbes, 
uh, members of the school committee. Um, it's evenings like this that makes it uh, just absolutely terrific being principal of the uh, Rainham Middle School. I've got a few words here that I'd like to share with you. First of all, Love Conquers Fear sounds like a great name for a movie made in Hollywood or a best-selling book. But here in Rainham, we have our own version of what Love Conquers Fear means. The main character in the Rainham version is our own Geraldine Fleury. Geraldine is a grade eight student at the Rainham Middle School, as Dr. Forbes just shared, and she and her family moved to Rainham from Boston this past summer. Last month, on October 9th, Geraldine sat in the Rainham Middle School auditorium along with her grade eight classmates and listened to a presentation on fire safety and prevention by Lieutenant Barrett Johnson and firefighter Jeffrey Kelleher of the Rainham Fire Department. At the commencement of that presentation, I shared with the students that throughout the school year, they would be presented many different lessons, but this lesson was perhaps the most important one they would be taught this school year. During the presentation, Lieutenant Johnson and firefighter Kelleher emphasized the need for students to develop with their families an exit plan, establish a meeting place, and what information to give when making a 911 call. Lieutenant Johnson reported to me that Geraldine's actions on the night of the fire in her home were a textbook. She led her brothers and sisters out of their burning home to a safe place and then proceeded to call 911, given all the pertinent details the firefighters would need once they arrived on the scene. As a result of Geraldine's bravery and quick reaction to the crisis at hand, she saved the lives of her brothers and sisters. Geraldine Fleury's brave-hearted display of courage on the night of the fire in her home was fueled by her love for her brothers and sisters that gave her the strength and courage to perform so hero heroically under such perilous conditions. Geraldine, your love certainly conquered fear. And you truly deserve this recognition tonight. From the bottom of my heart, and all of us at the Rain and Middle School, we are proud of you. Okay, next we have just a comment about our Veterans Day activities throughout our district. We celebrated uh, Veterans Day on Monday, and um, it was a great event. We had many veterans and members of the military um, visiting our schools here at the Rain and Middle School. We had a wonderful, uh, our 12th annual Veterans Day salute to our U.S. troops. And uh, we had some very special guests, our State Senator Mark Pacheco, State Representative Angelo D'Amelia, we had Mr. Paul Monte, um, whose son Jared was just honored by our uh, naming the uh, gymnasium at the Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School in his honor. Jared, of course, is the, uh, was posthumously awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his heroic actions in Afghanistan. We also had um, one of our teachers here at RMS, Eric Cedrone, who's also a U.S. Navy Chief Intelligence Specialist, who was one of the speakers. We had um, Lieutenant Commander Gabriel Gomez, who was a U.S. Navy SEAL. 
and uh, many other representatives, some from the 772nd Army National Guard unit in Taunton. Uh, some are parents are veteran uh, Chris Buckley, who's a, a sergeant, and also Sergeant uh, Kevin Marrera helped us out. It was just a, a wonderful event, and uh, as I said, many uh, town officials and other officials and uh, um, many veterans and military members joining in. It's so important, I think, for our students to, to realize how important it is to, uh, to say thank you to our veterans and our members of the military and uh, thank our RAVE organization for coordinating um, that effort across Rainham and also for all the events that took place in Bridgewater schools as well. And our administrators, Dr. Forbes, for joining us for that as well. And also, we also did our building subcommittee members recognition. So next on the agenda is public comment. Does anyone wish to address the uh, committee at this time? If so, please make your way to the podium. Seeing none, we'll continue. Uh, educational reports. We have our Student Advisory Council report and our um, school committee member who is an advisor to that group is uh, Mr. James Curtin. James, you moved. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm seeing things. <laughs> okay, musical chairs. James, I'll let you introduce our guest. Thank you very much. Uh, since our last meeting, the school committee advisory board at the high school held a vote and elected Miss Emily Bumpus as their chairperson. And so she's here with us tonight uh, and she'll be presenting a little bit of, uh, about what's been happening at the high school and some other, some other pieces of information that, that might interest us. Thank you, Emily. Good evening, school committee members. I'm Emily Bumpus, the chairperson of Student Advisory Board. I would first like to start with a report on STEM Day. I brought a schedule of events to share with you. The science department in TJ Squared has developed a day of presentations given by real scientists doing real science work in our area today. The idea is to excite and enlighten students to the many opportunities and careers av available in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. It will be held on November 21st in the BR Auditorium and Lecture Hall. We have made copies of the schedules and presenters in each topic they will be saying. Please join us if you are available. Now news from the Student Council. Student Council Presidents Caitlin Birchall and Kelly Amphola sold paper heart ribbons for Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October. The ribbons are now decorated with the back wall of our cafeteria. Stuco is working on an upcoming events such as bringing back the student faculty basketball game and electing a new teacher of the month every month. I would now like to introduce Katie Hogan who will be updating us on what is happening in the art and GSA clubs. Recently, Home Depot don donated and planted the flowers and trees that were put into the Peace Garden that is located in the outside corridor of the School of Science Wing. Along with the plants, Home Depot also donated a gazebo to be placed in the garden. Miss Wood's art classes have been working on flags that will be soon hung in the Peace Garden as well. The dedication will be in the spring when the plants bloom and the school committee will be invited. The Art Club and Foreign Language Club just hosted a very successful Halloween happening for over 100 area children, grades pre-K to second grade. The GSA hosted the meeting of the Southeast Region's GSA Networking Group. This is sponsored by the Department of Education. 11 schools were represented and over 60 students attended. Some members of the GSA also took part in the Thomas J. Fahey Memorial AIDS Walk. This takes place in Brockton and all money raised goes to support local people struggling with AIDS. Now Alyssa Hernandez will be updating us on BR Athletics. The BR Varsity Cheerleading team took first place at their competition in Braintree on Saturday, November 1st. The team won the Old Colony League title this past Saturday. The girls varsity soccer team won their first tournament game against North Quincy with a score of 5-1. They moved on this Saturday but did not successfully beat Franklin. The girls and boys cross country team have made it to the MIAA Division II sectional meet and completed in Wrentham this past Saturday. The varsity football team made it to the first playoffs and won their game against Catholic Memorial with a score of 14-0. They played Severian and Westwood on Saturday but fell to the number one seed with a score of 27-0. The Thanksgiving game this year will be played at 10 a.m. in Brockton. Thank you. Nicole Driscoll will be updating us on the newspaper club. 
The, news cl the newspaper club meets on Wednesday after school and brainstorms upcoming events for the week that will be highlighted for the page. Assemblies are time sensitive and some are not. We then choose what we want to write about. We usually try to have at least four to five stories prepared. The Brockton Enterprise prints three, but we try to have backup stories in case we have a short week or something else comes up. Once the story is complete, we email it to Miss Murdoch and she edits it as needed. The deadline for this is the next Tuesday afternoon. On Wednesday, Miss Satino takes all the stories and pictures and organizes them in a computer folder, which is sent to the Enterprise by noon. The Enterprise puts the page together to run every Friday. We have brought some samples for you to see. Now news from TJ Squared. TJ Squared competed at the River Age competition held at Goffstown High School with 37 teams from New England and New York. TJ Squared ended up seated second and picked their alliance partners to go through the finals. The alliance finished in fourth place with a record of nine wins and two losses. The team is building five robots with the VEX building kits to compete at the Savage Soccer Competition on November 15th. The competition is designed by robotics engineering students at WPI. Our students have four weeks to build a robot, debug it, and learn to drive it before the actual competition. The annual TJ Squared Dinner and Auction fundraiser is being held at the Vets Club on Friday, December 5th. The t tickets are $25 and are available until November 14th. Lots of great items have been donated by team families and community <coughs> businesses. Come and enjoy a fun and worthwhile night. Thank you, Nicole. Please thank all of the members that are participating in that to great publicity for us. I also want to publicly thank the Enterprise for doing that. It's great to get some positive news about out in the community about all the wonderful things going on in our schools. Steph Isadoria will be talking about the Yes Club. The Yes Club is trying to make VR eco-friendly. Miss Lazarus is making insect sculptures using wooden reed that speak to that speak to concerns about natural ecosystem and show forms in artistic expression. She hopes to hang several in the science wing as they finish up. For YES, we will be supporting equal exchange through a club fundraiser to raise money for tree planting in the spring. And we look to be making our own cleaning products using all natural and eco-friendly materials soon. Equal exchange supports small farmers and fair trade worldwide. November 15th is American Recycles Day. To celebrate the act of recycling on Friday the 14th, YES will be having a styrofoam collection drive. We will be collecting clean and rinsed items, which include the following, foam cups, plates, trays, blocks, and egg cartons. Other trays and cartons must be stamped number six. Items will be collected at all three lunches at the YES table and can also be brought to room D208 in the art wing. During these lunches, we will be having students and faculty sign in a pledge which items they will recycle throughout the year. When you sign in, you will be given a sticker and added to the list of Americans looking to help make a difference. Thank you. Great. That's it. That was a great report. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Great job, thank you very much. Continuing with our agenda, we have full day kindergarten program update by our assistant superintendent, Mr. Swenson. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Dr. Forbes. We are very proud to report out this evening that our district has had a very smooth and successful rollout of our new full day kindergarten program. We currently have 17 full day kindergarten sections district-wide, 10 at the George uh, Mitchell Elementary School and 7 at the Lily B. El uh, Merrill Elementary School. Class sizes are ranging between 19 and 22, which is excellent. We currently have uh, district-wide enrollment in our full-day kindergarten program of 339 students. We have 195 kindergarten students at the George Mitchell Elementary and 144 students at the Lily B. Uh, Merrill Elementary. Of these 339 students, 338 are attending on a full-time basis, which means that one student 
district-wide is only attending the half-day sessions. As you remember, when we were initially um, talking about the notion of moving forward with a full-day kindergarten program, we said that parents were well within their rights to have their children uh, just participate in a half-day session. So we only have one student of the 339 who has chosen, uh, family has chosen that option. Full-day kindergarten has a rigorous academic program that consists of daily blocks of English language arts, reading and writing mathematics, science, social studies, and unified art blocks as well. We've also implemented our new Empowering Writers program um, and our EM4 math program within our full day kindergarten program. These changes to the full day um, kindergarten program in the academic day in comparison to our former half day session in kindergarten plus program are reflective in both our kindergarten curriculum pamphlets which you have copies of and these will be sent home with our students with report cards on Friday and it's also reflected in our uh, report card and the report cards now are fully aligned with the timelines and are consistent with our grades 1 through uh, 12 population as well so now uh, kindergarten students receive four report card grading um, throughout the year rather than the two and, uh, that we had with the half day program. In speaking with our kindergarten teachers and our principals, uh, Mrs. Latenda and Mr. Lynch, we've received outstanding feedback about our full day kindergarten program. They really appreciate having the extra time with our students throughout the entire day. They have stated that it has allowed them to develop stronger academic and um, social relationships with their students and it also allows them more time to implement uh, any interventions that may need to be put in place for students who may need extra time and supports for academic or behavioral purposes. Um, to say that we are pleased with the implementation of the full day kindergarten program would be a true understatement. Um, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank the committee for all of your support throughout the process and, and the members of our communities as well. Um, we're incredibly proud of this program and the kids are uh, truly uh, prospering and loving, loving the program and I am not only speaking as the assistant superintendent but as a kindergarten parent and we absolutely <laughs> love it so thank you for your support and be happy to answer any questions that you may have about the program thank you mr. Swenson before I go to the committee dr. Phillips do you have anything you wish to add well I think I see some kindergarten teachers in the audience this evening we is do. that correct we do we have <laughs> Rebecca Pinkerton who is a wonderful um, kindergarten teacher down at the Mitchell Elementary School who would love to come to the podium this evening and talk a little bit about full day care. Yeah. Oh, oh, who would also like to come to the podium and speak about full day care. Well, open forum ladies if you'd like to say anything but we wouldn't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> first year teaching in the district and I think that the full day program has given my students so much of um, not to say an advantage but it gives us such a platform to really cater to each individual students needs it is just a fantastic opportunity for me as a teacher and for my students and being a prior first grade teacher seeing these students and what they're getting now in the full day program is going to make them so ready for the challenges of first grade so Thank you again for this opportunity for me and for my students. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anything yes. else, Dr. Forbes? Um, I received nothing but accolades for the full day kindergarten program. We're very fortunate to have it. And again, I would like to second what um, Mr. Swenson said. Thank you to the school committee for your leadership and for um, supporting the implementation of full day K here in the Bridgewater Rain and Regional School District. So thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions from any committee members? Any questions? Um, if I could, Mr. Swinton, how are the class sizes? I know, especially with kindergarten, it's very difficult to predict because sometimes you have new little kindergarten children coming up almost the first day of school. Average 19 to 22 are our class sizes, depending upon we have some classes, inclusion sections that we like to keep a little bit lower right. than some of their general ed um, pops. So a 19 to 22, which is really, truly outstanding. Very good. Um, yes, Mr. Gelfi. With or without aids? Um, the, the only paraprofessionals that would be used would be in our inclusion section to provide some support for, for our uh, identified special needs students. Any other questions? Thank you. 
questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And I think you can stay there, Mr. Swenson, because next we have the 2014 district report card overview. Thank you, Madam Chair. At last month's school committee meeting, I gave the accountability overview of our district. And um, this month, the report cards came up for each individual school in our district. And the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is uh, requiring that we send this information home with our students. We could do it electronically, or we could backpack it with our students. Each school receives its own report card. The report card that you have in front of you this evening is the district report card. This information has actually been posted on our website, um, the district website, and each individual school's report card has been posted on the individual school's website. So again, this information will be coming home with the students on Friday with report cards, um, and the high school students will be receiving it as well. Uh, the high school's report cards went out last week. And it just gives a basic overview of the information that I presented at the October meeting. We are a level two district. And that means that we are progressing and trending well, but we have not met some of the targets that we need to be meeting in order to be considered a level one school. One thing that we found very interesting, if you can kind of scroll down on um, this report card where it says, how does your district's achievement over time compare to the state? If you see our district is um, the district in navy blue, and below that would be the state of mass, and we are above the state average in each of these areas and this is a longitudinal study since 2011 and one thing that really really truly sticks out is that in the areas of mathematics from 2011 to now 2014 we have had a 10 percent increase in our advanced proficient scores and that is that is statistically uh, significant and in science we went from 56% advanced proficient in 2011 to 63% advanced proficient in 2014. So we are definitely trending in the right direction. And if you scroll down even further, this talks about our growth model for the district. And that this is comparison from year to year. So this would be uh, comparison data from 2013 to 2014. And again, if you scroll over to the mathematics section, 40% um, to 60% represents moderate growth. In the areas of mathematics, we're at 61% um, growth, which puts us in the higher percentile of growth over the years. So again, we are trending in the right direction, and we are very proud of that. The, uh, the second page of the report card just kind of gives a breakdown of some of our subgroup populations, our low income, our students with uh, disabilities, Eng English language arts. So those are high needs categories that I reported out on last month. Also, it gives us our attendance rate and discipline. And if you look at our attendance, our attendance for the district is 95.5% attendance. And that's in comparison to the state's 94.9. So we're above average in the area of our attendance. And something else that's noteworthy is our discipline. If you look at our discipline, out of school suspension rate is 1.5%, whereas the state is 4.3%. So that really speaks to our teachers and our administrators who work hard with our students because we know that the most important thing for our students to be is in school because there's a direct correlation between being in school and student achievement. So those are definitely some areas of this report card that we are proud of. And again, like I said, this will be going home with our students on Friday, and it is on all of uh, the district and individual schools' websites. Very nice. Thank you. Dr. Forbes, anything you wish to add? Um, yes. Um, we're very pleased with uh, math trending in the right direction and also science. A 10% and a 7% increase is significant. Um, we do have concerns, however, that both the state and our district are flatlined with English language arts. And so we're going to be taking a look at that with our um, lead teachers, our department chairs, um, and uh, try to analyze why is that not increasing. We know that the tests have changed, that we have different tests, um, with different um, uh, emphasis each year, um, but we're not pleased with that. And so I know that we'll, um, our, our teachers will dig down into that with our administrators and see what we can do to get that trending in the right direction. And I think one area, Dr. Forbes, is definitely with our writing that we've identified with our long comp, grades four, grades um, seven. 
And I really truly believe, and as our teachers do, who have been um, implementing the Empowering Writers program this year, uh, we received incredible feedback and, and we're hoping that this will show an improvement in the areas of writing, which would hopefully kind of lead to a higher levels of uh, improvement in those areas. So. Mm -hmm. And that's the real value of these reports and assessments is not to um, pit one district against another or one school against mm -hmm. another, but to show where there are areas where improvements can be made. And it's nice that they've given that longitudinal study from mm -hmm. 2011, 12, 13, 14 data so you can compare your growth over time. Absolutely. And then we take a look at our DART comparison districts, mm -hmm. and Mr. Swenson has been reaching out to find out what are the other districts doing, um, that we can learn from them to see if there's anything we can do uh, to improve. And I uh, know that our faculties are working very hard. They're thrilled with the empowering writers. Um, we're also looking at um, different uh, differentiated reading um, and uh, language materials. So we're hoping that we'll see an increase um, because we're not pleased with that. Our, uh, our folks are uh, very um, interested in seeing our students achieve more. Very good, thank you. Any questions from any committee members? Hearing none, thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Swenson. Next, we have a budget subcommittee update. Our budget subcommittee chair, Dr. Kalandowski. Right. The Budget Subcommittee met for a mini-marathon session on November 3rd, um, and I want to thank the um, committee, um, Mrs. Scoparis, Mrs. Williams, and Mr. Gelfi, and our administrators. Um, we have 12 items to vote on tonight. Oh um, we were very busy. Um, first, um, it is the recommendation of the Budget Subcommittee that we vote to repair the phone system at the La Liberty School. Uh, the phone system is not working properly and in order for teachers to receive their messages um, we would like to um, repair that phone system and we also would like to increase the estimate to repair that system from 30,000 to 50,000 and keep that replacement on the 2016 um, year for the capital improvement plan. So that's a motion. That's a motion <laughs> by Dr. Kluandowski. Second by Mrs. Twisted. Levy. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Another adjustment to our capital improvement plan would be for the roof replacement at the Mitchell Elementary School. Uh, we would like to add that to our plan um, for the year 2024 uh, with an estimated cost of $3.5 million. It's a 126,000 square foot roof, um, and we also will, you know, keep an eye on if there's any reimbursements for MSBA funding for, for roof repairs, but we would like to um, add that to our capital improvement plan. And that's a motion, Dr. Yes. Lewandowski, second by Mrs. Scleparis. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Aye. The next several votes are going to be for salary um, changes um, and the first will be that we recommend to the subcommittee that any new hires for our custodial staff will have an hourly rate of fifteen dollars motion by dr prewandowski second by second. mrs Scliff harris any discussion hearing none all in favor Aye. Aye. any opposed so voted we also would like to make a motion to increase the rate of pay for the three crossing guards um, from $14.50 to $15 an hour. Motion by Dr. Prewandowski, second by Mrs. Williams. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. We would like to recommend to the committee to increase the pay for substitute paraprofessionals and sports our fund junior counselors to the minimum wage rate of $10.10 to begin January 1st, 2015. Motion by Dr. Prewandowski, second by Mrs. Williams. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, yes, Mr. I just wanted to Mrs. say $10.10. Yes. Okay. The new minimum wage. Thank you. We certainly don't want to be below the minimum wage. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. We would like to recommend to the full committee to increase the substitute secretary pay from $12.50 an hour to $13.50 per hour. 
Motion by Dr. Perwindowski, second by Mrs. Williams. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. We would like to recommend to the full committee to set the salary uh, fee for PSAT proctors and detention coverage positions to $25 an hour. Motion by Dr. Perwindowski, second by Mrs. Williams. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. We would also like to set the pay schedule for the extended school year teachers to $30 an hour. Motion by Dr. Perwindowski, second by Mrs. Scleparis. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. We would like to recommend to set the rate for the self-funded after-school instrumental instructors to $30 an hour. Motion by Dr. Perwindowski, second by Mrs. Scleparis. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Okay. And on a different direction, we would like to recommend to the full committee to increase the hours for the district treasurer from a part-time 30 hour a week position to a full-time 40 hour a week salary position. And this particular position already includes health benefits that's already in the salary. So that would be a recommendation to the full committee. Motion by Dr. Perwindowski. Second by Mrs. Williams. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. And we would like to recommend to the full committee effective 2015-2016 school calendar year to uh, increase the preschool tuition rate from $18 to $20 per day. And we feel this is still very competitive for a preschool program. And this would be effective? Effective for next year, starting uh, next September. Okay. Uh, motion by Dr. Perlandowski, second by Mrs. Scliparis. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. And finally, we would like to recommend to the full committee to approve the rate of $780 to hire a third party independent administrator to oversee our 43B annuity plan. Uh, currently, this is being done by the Director of, of Business Services, and it's very complex, uh, it's very complicated, and we want to be sure that we're always you know, doing legally what is appropriate. So we felt that the, um, the professional at the $780 um, would, be, would be well spent for our district. And that's an annual rate. Correct. Motion by Dr. Prewandowski, second by Mrs. Williams. Any discussion? It's a one-time fee, correct? Yes, that, well. An annual? An, an annual. annual fee. Okay. And it's important because this, per, this um, person would know about tax IRS taxes and things like that that um, we so can't expect. Okay. Yes, we need a very qualified person to do that. Extra expertise required. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Levy. Um, motion by Dr. Prewandowski. Second was by Mrs. Williams, I believe. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. And that wraps it up. That was a busy it meeting. Was, it goodness. was. Okay, next on our agenda, we have Managing Life-Threatening Allergies, our head nurse, Mrs. Fahey. Welcome. Hi, thank you, Madam Chair, Dr. Forbes, and school committee members. I just wanted to give you a brief update. Dr. Forbes and I have had some discussions recently. Um, our Health Advisory Council met on October 28th, and we meet uh, four times a year and review on, and revise all of our health policies, including our wellness policy and our life-threatening allergy policy. We, um, I can't believe it's been eight years since we wrote the wellness policy. That was 2006. Um, we have seen a significant increase in the number of food allergies throughout the district. Um, approximately 5% of our population, our student population, um, has a food allergy. We have 258 students in the district that have an identified food allergy, and we're getting close to 200 EpiPens, separate EpiPens that we have stocked in our cabinets with children's names on them um, that need this life-saving medication. In addition, we carry a generic EpiPen in all of our schools because um, over the past several years in the state, 
uh, 25 percent of the EpiPens that were given by school nurses were given to people that had an unknown allergy, an unknown anaphylactic reaction. So that's pretty scary. Mm. And uh, we, we actually get the, the EpiPens free now the last couple of years through a grant. EpiPens for schools and the MyLand Corporation uh, funds those EpiPens for all of our district schools because they are expensive. Um, it's our recommendation after our last Health Advisory Council meeting for us to uh, come up with the idea that we need to eliminate all outside foods uh, from being brought in for celebrations. Now, I'm not talking about people's lunches or snacks that the parents pack them, but the foods that we share with children in the classroom, it's become an increasing, increasing concern, especially from a health perspective. And part of my job is looking after the health and safety of all students in our district, and it's become a real issue. And parents are very well intentioned, and staff as well. And at the younger grades, I'm really thinking more about the younger grades. We seem to have still the kind of parade of cupcakes and brownies coming in that we don't know what they used in the baking process. We don't have a label to look at. So for several reasons, we feel we have to follow what several other surrounding communities have done with um, banning any outside foods being brought in. Now, we're not going to eliminate all, no one likes a good cupcake better than I do, trust me, um, which is obvious. Um, but we're not going to eliminate all the celebrations. Dr. Seuss's birthday will still occur, but the, Thank yeah. <laughs> but the cake and everything will come from the cafeteria. They've done this the last couple of years, so we know what the ingredients are, and the parents of the food allergic children can feel more secure knowing that we have a list of ingredients that they can review if they need to, but no peanut products or tree nut products are used in our cafeterias. Um, and Eric Delau has been very good about working with us with all of our food allergies. Obviously, we can't eliminate every allergen or there'd be nothing left on the menu for, for the wide scope of allergies that we have, but we have to minimize the risk of potential exposure the best way that we can. So I think by doing this, um, we just recently had a wonderful Veterans Day uh, breakfast celebration, and Mr. Delisle supplied all of the foods, I think, Lynn, at the Bridgewater Middle School, um, and it was wonderful. So we can still have our activities, but we're just going to tighten up the controls of the food coming into our buildings. Okay? We'd like to, anyway. Um, parents can still celebrate their child's birthdays, by, um, they can look at non-food ways also, um, having them bring in a book to share with the class. It's still gonna be special. Or they can order something through Chartwells or through the um, cafeteria. And they have sent out, and I know many parents are already doing it, but they have sent out flyers to parents, and it's listed on the website too. Um, but he has a little menu of items that can be delivered and um, right to your child's classroom. It's really, I wish I had this when my children were younger, <laughs> but it's really easy um, to order something that's more nutritious and right to their classroom the day of their birthday. So I think we've got most of our bases covered, but we just wanted to um, discuss this with you and let you know that this is going to be a change. It's going to take some getting used to because um, I may have a harder time with my staff, with my colleagues, um, accepting some of this than the parents, actually. But um, does anyone have any questions? And first, Dr. Forbes. Uh, Marie, could you please share with the um, committee who sits on our advisory council, sure. the health advisory council? Yep. We have um, a local pediatrician, Dr. Fred Curran, is on the committee. We have our school physician, uh, Dr. George Gagne. We have uh, Sam Baumgarten, who is, the, he was uh, the coordinator of movement at Bridgewater State University. Um, we have several of uh, my school nurses, Mrs. Bashansky at the high school, Mrs. Nunes, Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Wood. Um, these are all school nurses in the district. With myself, we have Eric Delisle, our food service director on the committee. We have had a couple parent volunteers um, in the past. They haven't been able to make it the last couple meetings, but it's open to anyone that's interested. And we also have the local boards of health um, represented 
they were more involved when we were in the throes of the H1N1 uh, crisis, but I'll be reaching out to both of them, uh, the new gentlemen on both boards of health again, um, to see if they can attend our next meeting. Very good, thank you. Dr. Forbes? Um, this is a very serious issue that I'd like the committee to have some time to do a little research. I'd like to ask if we could get our uh, policy subcommittee together to review our wellness policy uh, with Marie um, and based upon the recommendation of the health advisory and the school doctor, I think we need to make sure that what we have is aligned with the recommendation from this committee. And I would hope that we could uh, bring the, the uh, policy to the January 2015 school committee uh, meeting for a vote. So we'll take it under advisement? Yes. Okay, before we do that, would any committee members have any questions? I have a quick question. Um, Ms. Dr. Pernandowski. Uh, Mrs. Fahey, who was in, um, teaches the bus drivers how to use the EpiPens? I did this mm -hmm. year. Okay. But they also have a first aid um, course that they take in order to become a bus driver. It's okay. in our, Kathy can tell you, it's in our specs for our bid um, for the procurement of the contract. And I do a review and a refresher, and I passed out all the um, these trainers, and we did it. Um, Couple, I think the second week of school or the third week of school. Excellent. And yeah. also the coaching staff. That's, that's the coaching staff are required to have CPR and certification. I'm not sure. Good question. Coaching staff. I'm not, I'll have to yes. double check on that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they also have um, a first aid certification, I believe, for that role. So everybody in the district is covered. Everybody's. Mm -hmm. Yep, the staff, the nurses all do monthly at uh, faculty meetings do a demonstration, and then we do refreshers prior to field trips usually if we have to delegate. Um, I try to send nurses when I can. Um, it's not always possible for every EpiPen, um, but we do our best. Great, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yes, um, Mrs. Levy. Yes. Um, I, just, I have a question. I know that um, this was brought up um, a few times with regard to the schools. Um, children bringing in peanut butter. Um, sandwiches, for mm -hmm. example, peanut butter and jelly. They can bring in peanut butter and jelly. However, I think there is a policy that the students must wash their hands after they eat. Is that correct? In some instances, yes. We encourage frequent hand washing, especially in the, the children don't eat their lunches in the classroom. Um, they eat them in the cafeteria. cafeteria, right. So that's when the peanut butter sandwich would come out of its uh, packaging. We send letters home to the classrooms of children who have an allergy and identified peanut or or tree nut allergy, and we ask that they secure their lunch properly and um, as best they can, and it, it's not brought out into the classroom environment so that they would have that down in the cafeteria. And they, the children with allergies are allowed to sit with other children who buy their lunch, not bring their lunch, okay. just for that reason. Okay. Yeah. I think there was some confusion there. But in, in certain situations, um, we have requested that the teachers allow the children to wash their hands when they're finished. It's a complex issue. There's a lot involved. There really is. Thank you for all your time. Oh, no problem. Thank you, Mrs. Levy. Mrs. Williams? So this is across all the schools in the district? Yes. Okay. Yes. And out of the 5% with food allergies, how many of those are the peanut tree, tree nut allergies? That would probably be, and I'm just guesstimating right now, that's probably two-thirds. Okay. Mm. It's the biggest one we have. But we also have eggs. There's some children with shellfish, but we don't serve shellfish, obviously. Um, eggs and milk, you know, dairy products, and um, sesame and soy are the other two big ones. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay, do we need a motion to take it under advisement? Okay, all right, so we'll take that under advisement and uh, have it on the agenda for our next meeting. Or oh, January, January meeting, just January yeah. meeting. Very good, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for all your work, Mrs. Vahey. Uh, we have nothing under unfinished business, new business. We uh, vote to approve the high school graduation date for 2014-2015. Our high school principal, Ms. Watson. Welcome. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school committee, Dr. Forbes, thank you. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts regulations, it is the practice of the Bridgewater Raynham Regional School District to hold graduation for their high school seniors no more than 12 school days before the regular scheduled closing date of that school. The graduation date being proposed tonight for this year's senior class is Sunday, June 7th, 2015, 
at 1 p.m. in the Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School Gymnasium. Thank you very much, Dr. Forbes. I recommend that the school committee approve this graduation date. Do we have a motion to approve the graduation date of June 7th at 1 p.m. in the high school gymnasium, which is now the Sergeant Jared Monte Gymnasium? Yes, it is. Motion removed. Motion by Mrs. Levy, second, second by Mr. Gelfi. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Mark your calendars. And if I just may add, um, there was some talk that the graduation date appeared to be late in the calendar. Um, but we did do some research and I reached out to some local schools. So just to let the committee and folks at home know, Taunton graduation is set for June 7th. East Bridgewater is set for June 7th. West Bridgewater is set. They do theirs on Friday night, June 5th. Oliver Ames and Easton is set for June 7th. And Brockton High School is set for Saturday, June 6th. So we're keeping in accordance with the rest. This is for Sunday and June. So, right. Mm -hmm. You got it. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We have already ratified our contract. So next we have acceptance of gift, a printer toner from BSU. Mr. Bennett. Well, Good evening, no. Madam Chair, Dr. Forbes, members of the school committee. I'm here to ask your permission to accept a donation from Bridgewater State University of two printer cartridges valued at around $260, which would be uh, very helpful to us. Absolutely. We love gifts. Dr. Forbes. <laughs> I recommend that the school committee approve this uh, generous donation. Based on the recommendation of the superintendent, do we have a motion to ex to approve the gift? So moved. Dr. Klewandowski, second, second by Mrs. Levy. Uh, and all in favor, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. And we also have a vote to approve the recycling of surplus computers, Mr. Bennett. Yes, we have been uh, very busy um, <coughs> recycling computers. We have uh, implemented a number of new machines around the district, which gave us some machines that we could reuse. And in the process of that, we're taking out all the things that we can't use. Uh, so these machines are pretty much obsolete. They won't run the software that we want to run anymore, or at least run it in a way that it should be run. Uh, so they're not really productive to us anymore as a school district, so we would like to recycle those. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Dr. Forbes? I uh, ask that the school committee uh, vote to approve um, the recycling of these computers, the obsolete equipment. Thank you very much. Based on the recommendation of Mr. Bennett and Dr. Forbes, do we have a motion to approve? Motion. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Scliperis, second by Mr. Gelfi. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Thank you very much. Next, we have acceptance of a gift to Target Take Charge of Education. Our RMS principal, Mr. Florence. Uh, good evening again. Um, Lacia Ward of Target um, has presented me with a check for $226.48. I ask you to accept this gift. Uh, she has specified that we can use this money for uh, whatever we need, such as books, field trips, art supplies, or new technology. I ask you to accept this gift. Thank you, Mr. Florence. Dr. Forbes? I recommend that uh, the committee approve this um, gift. And based on the superintendent's recommendation of Mr. Florence, do we have a motion to approve? Motion by Mrs. Levy, second, second. by Mrs. Scopares. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you, Mr. Florence. Thank you. A vote to dispose of obsolete equipment. Ms. Bastoni, our principal at the Bridgewater Middle School. Good evening, Madam Chair, School Committee, Dr. Forbes. I'm respectfully requesting your permission to dispose of outdated obsolete technology equipment which consists of 22 overhead projectors, three old printers, 11 old televisions, one keyboard, one computer, and nine VCRs. My goodness. <laughs> Dr. Forbes. I uh, recommend to the committee that uh, you approve um, getting rid of the obsolete items. Um, motion to approve. So move. Dr. Kulandowski, second, second by Mr. Clapham. Any discussion? To be, yes. to, to be recycled. To be recycled. Right. To be recycled. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Gelfi. Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you. Thank you. And we have academic school year calendar updates. Mr. Swenson, welcome back. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Dr. Forbes. As a result of this evening's ratification, of the collective bargaining agreement between the Bridgewater Rainham Regional School 
Committee and the Bridgewater Rainham Education Association. We do have some um, calendar dates that we need to um, update. And um, the biggest one being that now that we are reinstituting our spring conferences, we have spring conference dates set. So in your packets, you should have a, <coughs> a um, 2014-15 calendar of important dates. And the first spring conference that we're going to um, be putting in will be Thursday, March 5th. And this will be the spring conference. It's just an evening conference, and this will be for the Bridgewater Raynham Regional High School. Um, and then the spring conferences for the uh, pre-K through eight population, we are going to have a half day on April 14th, 2015. That will be a district-wide half day. And in the grades pre-K through eight, those, that half day will be used for afternoon conferences. At the high school, that is going to be used as a departmental common planning um, opportunity. And this is coming from the recommendations of our NEASC report that uh, Ms. Watson read out uh, earlier this year. So the afternoon conferences district-wide for pre-K through 8 will be April 14th. And those, uh, those will also be the evening uh, conferences as well and then the second evening conference for grades pre-k through four will be April 16th and um, so the, the grades five through eight will only have the afternoon conferences on the 14th and the evening conferences on the 14th as well pre-k through four we'll have um, two evening conferences, one on the 14th of April and one on the 16th of April. And that's reflective in your calendars. Any questions about the spring conferences? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear, I didn't understand. What was going on March 5th? March 5th is going to be the high school's half um, day. spring. Uh, no, that's, that's not a half day. Okay. They're just having evening, evening conferences at the high school on okay. March 5th. Thank you. Yep. That is a full day of school. Okay. District wide and at the high school. Any questions about spring conferences? Any questions, committee members? Mr. Gelfi. I have on February 5th is highlighted. Yes, I'll, I'm going to get to the dates um, in the actual academic cal calendar. Okay. We'll discuss that as well. So, does anyone have any inf questions about spring conferences? Okay, so now going to um, other date changes within the um, academic year on November 26th. This was originally going to be a full day of school. This is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. This is now going to be a half day of school, district-wide pre-K through 12. So that is the first um, date that we would like to bring to the committee and to the community's um, attention. So again, November 26th will be from a full day of school to a half day of school. As Mr. Gelfie just noted, um, February 5th, we, we were originally we were going to have that as a half day for common planning, um, but it was agreed upon that that half day would then be shifted to the April um, half day for the, for the conferences. So we're going to eliminate that half day on um, February 5th so that will no longer be a half day in the academic calendar that will be a full day of school and we will not be having that common planning pre-k through 12 opportunity throughout the district so we're shifting that February 5th date to the April 14th half day we just felt as though it would be less burdensome for our parents to have you know because we're adding um, an additional half day that we would eliminate that half day on February 5th. Thank you, Mr. Swenson. Mm -hmm. Dr. Forbes? Yes, um, I recommend to the committee that they vote to approve the calendar updates. We have a motion to approve. Motion by Mrs. Williams, second, second. by Mr. Galfi. Any discussion? Can I just ask a question? Yes, Mrs. How do Williams. these get communicated to the parents and teachers? Right, so 
we're upon your approval this evening, we will uh, make sure that this gets out to our um, administrators first thing tomorrow morning. And then um, it'll probably, I think the course of action will probably be backpacked home with the report cards that are going out on Friday. And then some type of connect ed message would go out to the um, parents as well, stating that, uh, you know, that, that some changes in the academic calendar are coming. We'll also post it on our websites and our district Facebook as well. Just because it's so soon. It is, yeah. Soon. We're going to get right on it first thing tomorrow as soon as we have an approval for these dates. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you, Mr. Swenson. Thank you. Dr. Forbes, we have a personnel update. Yes, it's very brief this evening. I would like to announce an appointment of David Ferreira, a business teacher at the high school, effective date uh, November 3rd, 2014. And that concludes my report. My goodness, we're <laughs> heading for a nice quick meeting here. Um, any further discussion from any uh, school committee members? Anything you wish to bring up at this time? I believe our December meeting since we're not going to meet on Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, will be December 17th, if I'm correct. December 17th. That will yes. be at 7 o'clock, the regular meeting at the high school. Anything else? Seeing or hearing nothing else, I'll have accept a motion to adjourn at 8.16 p.m. Motion by... So moved. Dr. Kuwandowski, second by Mr. Clapham. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you all for coming.